Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 6 of our F1 2020 My Team Career Mode here, ready for the Spanish Grand Prix. Obviously if you missed out yesterday's video from the Dutch GP, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking that video out. We took some gambles. Whether they paid off or not, yeah, go back and check out that video, obviously if you want to see that race as well. But heading though to the Spanish Grand Prix circuit. Obviously, this time last season, it was one of our best results of the year, uh, early, early on into the championship. Definitely a race to remember. Obviously, Lando Norris took home his one and to this day only Formula 1 Grand Prix victory that we've seen in this sort of My Team universe, if you will. But in terms, though, of the car this weekend, we have had another upgrade go on. So we are now up to sixth best Currently in Formula 1, we've still got another two upgrades in development at the moment that should be done, I think, before the next Grand Prix weekend out at uh, Monaco. So hopefully we'll have the fuel efficiency and the rear downforce halo upgrades on the car as well. But you can start to see there's a bit of a divide forming, you know, between Mercedes and ourselves. And there's a bit of a drop off uh, to Renault and the rest of the field at the moment. So whether we're starting to see Alpha Tauri ourselves and Racing Point Close to Ferrari and Red Bull and Mercedes is hopefully a good sign of things to come over the course of this season. But in terms of upgrades, though, that I'm looking in the future, ideally, I'm looking at potentially getting, uh, where is it, the front wing end plates downforce upgrade on the car. Another big aero upgrade, which should theoretically bring us very, very close to in line with the top runners as well and on the chassis side of things i probably should be looking at the engine color distribution as well but obviously we need a few R and more r d points to be able to get those upgrades and the best thing for that is to jump into free practice here for the spanish grand prix coming towards the end of our fuel run it is just insane how different sector three has made me view this circuit now it's finally sorted out now it actually makes sense as part of a racetrack, I really do quite the, like the Spanish Grand Prix. I think for the first time since I started playing the F1 games back in 2010, 10 years ago, it's taken me to finally appreciate this circuit. So, free practice done and dusted then, and another good haul of points between myself and George. 1,908 R&D now. We're up to level 15 acclaim as well, so we're still making good progress now. Let's get that chassis upgrade on the car. So there we go then. The engine cover distribution upgrade is now in progress. It'll be ready by the 2nd of June. So it will take a few weeks. But I mean that should bring our chassis up towards the top runners. It feels like at the moment we seem to make three steps forward. The rest of the field seem to make two. So we are slowly getting towards the front of the field. But it is just taking a little bit longer than I probably would have wanted. If we can get a few more R&D points in this weekend, we might be able to get the cockpit weight reduction upgrade on the car as well. But we do need to start being careful because we haven't got many upgrades left before we're going to have to spend some money on facilities. Anyway, let's dive in then here for qualifying. So here we are then ready for our first qualifying run at the Spanish Grand Prix. Our qualifying time last year was a 17.4. I think it was a 17.408 to be precise. So if we can aim for about a 15, that should be I think roughly where we're aiming for this weekend. Hopefully we can try and sneak into Q2 again. Magnussen already straight into a 15.9 so we should be able to get there. Coming to the end of our first run. It's been a bit of a sloppy lap, so we'll see what it is. It's a 16-3. Not a very good banker at all then, but there's plenty more time to find. Well, George has clearly been able to find a lot more time in the car. He's already down into the 14s. I've got no idea how he's managed that heading into this weekend. But hopefully now, we can try and get a bit of a better lap in this time around. If we can try and get a mid-15, I'd probably be quite happy. Through the final corner to finish off our second run then. We're about half a second up. But it's still not looking particularly good at the moment. 12th place. That's alright actually at the moment. But everyone could still go a whole lot quicker as we instantly get bumped back down to 13th. 
Just under three minutes to go then in Q1. And I'm going out for one final run just because I'm not confident. But very, very close to the cusp at the moment. And I think expecting no less than two cars to go quicker is a bit optimistic at this stage of the session. So we're going to go for one final run then around this Spanish Grand Prix circuit. Hopefully we can just find another couple of tenths. Get us a little bit safer towards Q2. Ride the curbs through the first couple of corners. Instantly finding the tenth through there. Things you love to see as we head out through the end of the first sector. It's such a good track now. You can be so committed in so many places. And finally, sector three somewhat matches the flow of the rest of the lap here. Just trying to keep it nice and tidy. A little bit too much wheel spin through there. But we are a couple of tenths up at the moment as we head through the bottom of the hill. Making a bit of a mistake there, but nothing too much to worry about. Just a blend through out onto the back straightaway. We have lost a bit more time, though. Just trying to keep it tidy as best as possible. Avoid the bump on the inside. That's found us a little bit more time. Things that you love to see. Final few corners, though. Just try and keep it nice and tidy. Try to avoid the big yellow curbs. Wheel spin avoidance at the final corner. We are going to be about another two tenths up. Which is going to be good. That's going to give us a 15-5. Only about half a second off our teammate. We don't gain any places. But another couple of tenths is certainly ideal to have in the back pocket. Everyone's got one more run. Hopefully that's enough. Where is everyone finding this time? Late on in the sessions. 19th place. For the Spanish Grand Prix, you look, the top 16 are only separated by a second at the end of qualifying there. And you look at cars that are much slower than us. I mean, Esteban Ocon, 7th place there, half a second off pole of Hamilton in Q1. And a 15-5, near enough 2 seconds quicker than we were able to go last year. Only puts us ahead of Nick De Vries and the Williams. I've got no idea where the AI are finding all this time at the moment. I know there's been a bit of a, bit of a glitch found uh, with rewinding and then fast-forwarding in qualifying. and I, oh, Sorry, on time trial on F1 2020. And I don't know if that's making a bit of a difference as well, but with 1.2 off pole, and we're out in 19th place in Q1. What I'm probably therefore going to do is swap out a few parts on the car. We'll start from the back of the grid and hope that we can make progress from there. We were only, what, half a second off George Russell who was inside the top 10. And based on how OP he is over one lap, I'm worryingly happy with that on it by itself. But when you look at the bigger picture, it's not looking good. Anyway, like I said, we'll get a fresh engine in the back of the car and we'll dive in then here for the Spanish Grand Prix. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, a track that will certainly force the drivers to push themselves. It consists of a very impressive main straight going into turn one. It's a straight that also offers a DRS zone, so it's likely to be a hot spot for overtakes. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Why don't we discuss Red Bull? We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year and the sides haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. It doesn't look promising for them so far. And if the new regs have hit them as hard as we think, well, I suspect they may need a few late nights at the factory to get back on track. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Daniel Ricciardo, and Stroll, Perez, Leclerc, Albon, and Carlos Sainz, Vettel, Ocon, Daniel Kvyat, and Raikkonen, Gasly, Norris, Nobuharu Matsushita and Kevin Magnussen, De Vries, King, Latifi and Mr. Monaco. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Here we are then on the grid, ready for the Spanish Grand Prix, starting right from the very back for this one. But however, George Russell, our teammate, I think that is genuinely the best qualifying position this team has ever got in a Formula 1 Grand Prix. That's a fantastic job 
done by him to get the team onto the second row. I think our best was P5 at Monza last year behind the Mercedes and the Ferraris. But George Russell, he could be on for his very first podium this weekend in Formula 1. I don't want to get too overexcited at the start because safety cars are always the thing and they seem to affect every race uh, in this career mode so far. But we start right from the very back. We're going to go for a medium-hard Grand Prix. Hopefully, that can just try and get us into the mix, but we need a good getaway here as well. I'm going to try and not put as much extra fuel in the car because I find, obviously, if we end up getting a safety car, then we end up with way too much fuel at the end of the Grand Prix. However, if we don't get a safety car, we might be having a fuel save just a little bit at the end of the day. But starting then from the very back, we can only go forwards in today's Grand Prix. I just want to dive right into it then. Here from the Spanish Grand Prix circuit. 65 places worth of grid penalties. Five red lights and it's lights out. And away we go. Hopefully we can try and get a nice clean getaway, which we have done. No idea why it's saying Jordan King is in 22nd, our former teammate, as we head down towards turn one. Oh, a lot of carbon fibre. Uh, being kicked up by the cars around us, but we're hopefully past both Williams off the start. No, Jordan King tries to keep the nose up the inside. We should be able to get past him, though. You can see a huge gaggle of cars just in front of us here. Matsushita, ooh, a little bit of a accidental dive at the inside of both the Haas cars there. But we are going to be up another couple of spots as we head down into Sector 2. We've got to be aggressive off the start of the Grand Prix. Raikkonen has got damage, so we need to try and get round him. So it's actually been a good little start for ourselves. Raikkonen tries to keep the nose there, but lack of front end arrow. He is going to have to slot in just behind us. So we're up six places off the start of the Grand Prix. The fresh engine working wonders off the getaway there. As all Lando, last year's race winner, a little bit early on the brakes. We'll try and capitalise on that. As everyone a bit cautious on that one. Trying to now get a bit of a run on the Alpha Tauri of Danny Kvyat as we head down towards turn one. You can see just how well that Honda power unit works when with a completely fresh engine we can't even gain on the Alpha Tauri in towards the first corner there. It's going to be a difficult long race, I'll be honest. we just got to try and make up places where we can. Out of the final corner once again, we're able to just get a bit of a run on at the Alpha Tauri, but then you just head down towards turn one and anything over about 200 miles an hour, he just seems to start pulling away again at the moment. I do not want to spend all afternoon looking at the back of him. We have got a lot more aerodynamics though. We're much, much quicker through the corners. So I feel over the course of a lap, if we can get ahead of him, he won't be able to do much in retaliation. Into the pits, the end of lap six rather early, but saying that, I guess obviously the soft runners won't be able to go that far in this Grand Prix. It's being a little bit loose and lively out of the final couple of corners. We should be close to the points. Yeah, I'm into P10 then of the Grand Prix at the moment there. So I think George was up at like a net P3 of this Grand Prix in the early stages there. But we're still struggling to really get close to Danny Kvyat. Anymore. I think we're just trying now to play a little bit more of the long game here. But strategy is definitely going to mix up this grid. There's so many teams that are so evenly paced here. The two stop is probably going to give the front runners a lot of headaches this weekend. The Grand Prix is we're going to see a couple more cars into the pits. I think that's Stroll perhaps and Alex Albin. Okay. Yes it is. Stroll and Ricardo. sorry. I forgot obviously Verstappen is no longer a Red Bull driver in this series. So we're up to eighth. But we just really need either Kvyat and Gasly to start battling or Kvyat to lose his DRS if we want a chance at getting past because that is what's keeping Kvyat there at the moment. I very much feel like at the moment we're getting the proper Spanish Grand Prix experience this weekend. You're stuck behind a car that you think you can go a lot quicker than that is only quick and is only in front of you because they've got so much extra top end speed at the moment. It really is. Oh, there's Kvyat. A little bit of a wobble there. We just need him outside of Gaz's DRS, and then I'm sure it would only take one lap before we were past him. That's not helped us, though. I really have got to hope that Danny Kvyat dives into the pits either a lap before or a lap after us here, because I do not want to be stuck behind him throughout the second half of this Grand Prix. We're just trying to apply the pressure 
seeing if we can force an error out of him. Every time he does make a mistake, it's just in the right places. Like, look at the run. We we're able to get into there. We could have tried to go for a bit of a sin, but I don't want to lose half the front wing. And then out of the final corner, we just lose a bit of time again. Gain a little bit before the DRS, and then up towards 200 miles an hour as actually the front runners start to dive it in. Just he gets carried along by Gasly again. We are going to dive it in most likely end of this lap, unless Kvyat does, and then I might try and go for a bit of an overcut on him, but that Alpha Tauri, I can admit it's a good looking car, I just don't want to see the re its rear wing for much longer in this race. End of lap 14, and what is Danny Kvyat going to do in this Grand Prix? Gasly's going to come in, so we're going to join the other Alpha Tauri into the pits, hopefully we can try and get the undercut on Danny Kvyat just to make get the car slow down in time Unlike what we were able to do back in Season 1. But I think our best chance here is hope that Kvyat potentially gets held in the pits by someone. Obviously, that's one of the joys of having the furthest pit box in the sport. Come on, nice clean stop, nice clean stop. Two seconds. Are we going to do it? Yes! We've got past Pierre Gasly here. Now, we need to push like crazy so we can try and get past his teammate as well. We're going to come out with not much clean air. But we're ahead of one of the Alpha Towers. Let's see if we can jump the pair of them here. That is exactly what we needed. A great pit stop by the team has given us a chance. Coming towards the end of the lap. I've just spotted Stroll in front of us. He's actually going to set the medium tyres. So he's going to be pitting in again at some point in this race. There's no way he can try and take those to the end. Oh, a little bit of a wobble there. Accidentally putting the car down into first gear through the final couple of corners, but where is Danny Kvyat in this Grand Prix? There he is in the pit lane. We should be able to get past him. See you later, mate. Up inside the top 10 once again of this Grand Prix. And a big, big thank you to the team for that amazing pit stop, which has really, hopefully now, changed this race for us. It's given us a little bit more motivation. Hopefully now we can sneak past Stroll. That Stroll very much struggling. Through the final few corners here around this trap. We might try and go for a bit of a send into the hairpin. Oh my god, that was not what I wanted to do. I guess we've accidentally made the move work in the end. Hopefully no front wing damage from that. Somehow, getting away with what was an accidental move. But Stroll was so slow through the final few corners there. There wasn't much I was going to be able to do in that situation. We're back up into ninth place then. Ricardo. Another man on the medium, so there might be still some good points on the board today. Ricardo then into the pits again. So we're going to be back up into P8 of this race. However, it might be P7 quite soon because I genuinely think now, for the first time this race, excluding lap one, we might be able to get past a car just through DRS. I know, it seems crazy around the Spanish GP. We spent so long thinking DRS basically was... Just horrendous around this track. But Ocon, he doesn't quite have the same pace at the moment. He's got no one to tow him along. It might be possible. I don't want to get too optimistic, though. So, George into the pit lane, then, for hopefully the final time in, in this Grand Prix. However, we're a bit more worried about trying to get past Esteban Ocon at the moment. Perez also in, so hopefully those guys come out still in some good air in this Grand Prix. But Ocon is aware of us. On the run down towards turn one. We've made an overtake. An on-track overtake. Who would have thought it? This late on into the Grand Prix. Lap 20. Just 14 to go here. Up into P5 now of this race. Effectively now best of the rest. So that's 17 places made up in 20 laps. It's still looking good at the moment. Let's just see how quick people like my teammate George Russell might be able to come back at us. George Russell, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Could the team... I think it would be our third ever fastest lap bonus points in Formula 1. I'd be rather happy with that. And it really does go to show just how quick George Russell is in this car at the moment. He is a fantastic driver and I'm so happy we were able to get him on board. Unlike Jordan King... Well, he's made me realise just how bad Jordan King must have been over one lap in qualifying. The fact that... I mean, he out-qualified us, what, like four or five times last year? And so far, we're yet to out-qualify Russell. He's a machine, and I want to keep hold of him for as long as possible. On to lap 25, then. 
We're just trying to keep Ocon above that one second margin behind us. Vettel and Verstappen are just pulling away at the road, as you'd probably expect the Mercedes at the front of the field. Some things never seem to change in this series at the moment, but it seems to just be every other race at the moment is a good one for us. So hopefully next time at Monaco, uh, we can break the streak and have two good races in a row here. But yeah, it's all just sort of falling into place. The joys of the Spanish Grand Prix circuit really doesn't play into the top runners here, but I think Mercedes and Ferrari were aware of that this weekend and have managed to make the one-stop strategy work nonetheless. It's just people like my teammate Russell who I'm a little bit gutted for because there was the potential of some great points today if strategy had gone his way a bit more. However, there's still eight laps to go. Maybe a late race safety car or where we just get our third race over the entirety of this series where we don't get a safety car. Coming on to lap 30 then of the Grand Prix. We're still sitting PBs this late on into the race. However, Verstappen and Bottas seem to just be trading fastest lap after fastest lap at the moment. We're only about six, seven tenths off the times that they're setting those. So I'm rather happy with that. And I would genuinely say nowadays in Formula 1, we have probably on race pace alone, arguably got the third fastest car in Formula 1 at the moment. Red Bull, for some reason, is still ranked second, and I don't think either of their drivers are inside the top 10. It just never seems to work out for the Red Bull team at the moment. I'd argue Alpha Tauri have got a quicker car than them at the moment, with all the Honda upgrades that both teams have been given. It really does seem to have suited Alpha Tauri a whole lot more than Red Bull at the moment, but we just seem to be getting stronger and stronger week in, week out at the moment with this car, and I really do think... It won't be too long before we get a track that suits us. We could be fighting for dubs. Coming on then to the final lap of this Grand Prix. We've been pushing for some better PBs at the moment. There we go. A 17-4 is probably all going to be able to do. I mentioned how Verstappen and uh, sorry, Verstappen and Bottas were trading fastest lap. Vettel's just suddenly decided he'll take it instead uh, from the pair of them there. Oh, how I would laugh if that ended up deciding the World Championship at the end of the day. But I think our teammate George Russell has finally made the move on one of the McLarens to get himself up now into ninth place of this Grand Prix. So it should be another double points finish for the team here. And when you consider we've got two Mercedes and two Ferraris that should be, you know, easily bagging sort of top four or five positions each Grand Prix. The fact that there's only really six other points paying positions and how tightly bunched the midfield is to be able to get double points finishes fairly consistently we'll be rather happy with Bottas a 16-6 to come through to take home the race victory Hamilton goes quicker Verstappen goes even quicker they're all just trading fastest laps is Vettel going to be able to do anything as well no so it is Verstappen who takes home fastest lap Bottas though is going to take home the dubs for Mercedes I think re-inherit the championship lead for his sale his self as well but through the final corner it's going to be last to fifth here from the Spanish Grand Prix. Strategy played into it, but that ended up being a good day at the office. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. They've done it then. A spectacular victory here in Spain and a massive confidence boost going into the next race. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team and they certainly deserve it.
Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Valtteri Bottas passes his rival to take over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximised their potential. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, Renault move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So there we are then, the end of the Spanish Grand Prix. And it is another 43 points on the board for Mercedes. Job done, weekend complete. I guess that's all they can really say at the moment. I'm sure they're a little bit gutted to miss out on the fast slap bonus point. But yeah, Bottas takes home the win to reclaim the lead in the Drivers World Championship ahead of Hamilton there. Verstappen actually gave him a good run at the end of the day. Obviously, remember, Sebastian Vettel finished Mercedes' win streak last time out at the Dutch Grand Prix there. So Seb, I'm sure a little bit gutted to finish P4, but we finished best of the rest from last on the grid there. Rather happy with that result, I'll be honest, at the end of the day there. Esteban Ocon in sit ahead of Kvyat Gasly and our teammate George Russell, the only man on the two-stop who was able to still score points at the end of the race there. And if you have a look, his fastest lap, only three tenths off for Stappens at the end of the day, gives the team 12 points from this weekend. You know, we're trying to build up that margin in P3 overall, and it's working quite nicely for us. At the moment there. Last year's win, Orlando Norris just gets the points as well there in 10th place. And you have four British drivers inside the top 10 at the end of the day. Very, very happy with that. You can see further down the order though, Ricardo 12th. Where was his teammate? Albon 17th. Yet Red Bull have supposedly still got the second fastest car in Formula 1 at the moment. I definitely feel like we have now got the third best car in Formula 1 behind Mercedes and Ferrari. Oh, excuse me, Ferrari there at the end of the day there. Raikkonen, though, down in 20th, only ahead of the Williams cars. As said, Jordan King, two laps down at the end of the day there. Everyone, though, I think for just the second time in this series was able to get to the end of the Grand Prix. I think the only other time that happened was Abu Dhabi last year there. But in terms, then, of the Drivers' World Championship, Bottas, like I said, yeah, three points now on top again over Lewis Hamilton there. Verstappen... Up, still holding on to P3. We're still in fourth, just ahead of Sebastian Vettel, but I think fifth place in the Drivers' World Championship might be possible this year there. Mr. Consistency, Sergio Perez still in sixth. Kvyat jumps back past Charles Leclerc as Ocon jumps past our teammate George Russell, who is still inside the top ten at the moment. There. You can see Ricardo and Albon, 11th and 12th at the moment. It has not been a good opening few rounds for them, but no other changes Towards the rear of the field there. Constructors-wise, Mercedes still miles on top ahead of Ferrari there. We're now 24 points clear of Racing Point, though, in P3. So if we can hold on to that, I'd be rather happy at the end of the day. Alpha Tauri up into fifth ahead of Renault as Red Bull and Alfa Romeo get moved down the order there. Red Bull down to seventh place overall. It has really not been an opening few races, like I said, to remember for them. But thank you all. So much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we will be back tomorrow ready for our best chance at a good result this season. We head to the Monaco Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.